Uh, good to see everybody. Um, as you know, these are always the two uh, worst days of the year, and, uh, and not only for me personally, but really everyone in our building. And, and uh, we know this is a business, and, and we know that they're grown men and they're football players, but uh, when, you know, we see day in and day out what these players sacrifice, you know, the blood, the sweat, the tears, and, and then just the relationships we have with all these players. And it starts back uh, you know, through a draft process. It could be through the free agency process, but uh, the day-to-day, the lunches, you know, sitting in the meetings with these players. So this is tough, and, and uh, this is a really good group of players we're releasing. And, and so on behalf of uh, Nathaniel, myself, and the entire uh, Broncos organization, we just want to thank these players. And uh, we're going to try to get a lot of these players back in our practice squad, and, and we'll just kind of see how the night goes. Uh, we realize we'll probably lose a few to, to other teams, but, uh, um, you know, we got a long night ahead of us. Um, you know, we had a lot of tough decisions. You know, we had, I think we had more depth this year on our roster, so there are a lot of conversations and, and uh, a lot of collaboration went into it with, uh, you know, the coaching staff and the scouts, and, and I applaud uh, Mooj here, uh, the way he navigated that and, and led the meetings and, and Coach Hackett, and it's, it's hard to get an offense, defense, and special teams all on the same page, and, and we were able to do that and make some really uh, tough decisions. And so uh, I really appreciate the leadership, and, and it wasn't just the coaches and and the scouts, but you know Ray Jackson, he was involved. Mark Thews and Richard Todd. It really takes a village when you're making this many, uh, uh, making this many uh, decisions. Um, I, I really, uh, you know, was appreciative of the preseason, uh, the training camp, uh, Coach Hackett and his, and his coaches, the way they prepared us um, for the regular season. I think we're, we're ready to go. I thought it was good that we had some adversity, you know, in the preseason. Uh, you know, starting with Dallas, the Dallas scrimmage, and, and then the game, I thought we did a lot of good things. And then we go to Buffalo and we laid an egg, we got punched in the mouth, you know, and everyone's kind of looking in the mirror. And then the young guys, you know, I like the way they responded against Minnesota and uh, did a lot of good things in that game. So feel good about our team. I feel good about uh, our 53 man roster. Uh, very fluid, as you guys know. Tonight will be a busy night. Our pro scouts, uh, led by AJ Durso and Roman Pfeiffer and Reed Burkhart and Kelly Klein and, and Patrick Walsh, you know, they've written eight, you know, over a thousand reports on, on the bubble players. And so tonight we'll be up most of the evening, um, you know, seeing if we can upgrade the bottom end of our roster or even the top end of our roster. So it's a fluid roster. I feel good with where we are as a football team. I know we're all excited for the regular season. Uh, week one, you know, we face a, a really good opponent in the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, you know, I think it's the toughest place to play uh, in the NFL. And, and so with that, I'm happy, uh, Mooj and I are happy to take your questions. Hey, George, uh, what players will you, you be putting on IR tomorrow? Yeah, we're going to put uh, Greg Dulcich and, and uh, Ojemudia. Do you think their track will be available week five? They are. You know, they, they will 100% be available week five. So then, uh, question is, what, what uh, gave Brett the edge at back of quarterback and what gave Wayne the edge at final? You know, it was really tough. Uh, Brett and uh, Josh had a great competition. It came down to the final game. Um, you know, it was, but the body of work, I mean, it was uh, both these guys did a lot of really good things. I just think the way, uh, you know, Rip operated the offense, the way he moved the team, um, you know, he did some really good things. And so, you know, I'll let Coach Hackett kind of talk about the rest of that. But it was a really close competition. We hope to get Josh back as well. And uh, with the punting situation, and again, another great competition, two really good punters. Sam's been a good punter in this league for a long, long time. Um, Corliss is, is something, you know, really talented. You know, we, we claimed him last year. Um, actually, we worked him out first, and then we, uh, we claimed him. But big leg, lefty. Um, we think he has unique ability to hang time, uh, directional, a very good athlete, um, a very, very good holder. Uh, unfortunately, he's a very good ping pong player. He beat me in the semifinals of our ping pong challenge. Um, but no, I feel really good about Corliss and uh, wish Sam nothing but the best. You still, you still kept him. I did. I was up. I had him beat. It was 20 to 18, and he beat me 21 20 for the final. So I'm still a little upset. So, um, Corliss. Yeah. So, uh, one for G, you guys, George, starting with you, you've done a lot to this roster this offseason, starting with adding a lot of free agents. You talked about it a little bit, but how eager are you just to see this team in regular season action and see what you have there? No, I think we're all eager to see this team. We see it in practice every day. You know, I, I, um, these guys get after it in practice. They like to compete, and uh, they're chomping at the bit to play in the preseason games. Um, 
but now they're even going to be more excited to play in the regular season games. We see it in practice. Can't wait to put it all together. You know, now that we got some of the guys back, you know, Randy and, and Billy, and and uh, you know, see it all come together. And then, Darren, uh, George mentioned you leading that process last night. Could you just give us a sense for the scope of both the cut down process and then tonight and tomorrow making those waiver claims, putting the practice squad together, and kind of who's involved? In yeah, the process is uh, thorough and fluid. You know, and it's it's been a great process with really getting to the 53-man roster. Obviously, everyone in the building has a voice on these players, but when it comes down to that 53, it's really the personnel and the coaching staff. And there's a lot of communication, a lot of good conversation, and there's a lot of hard decisions. But luckily this year, there was a lot of consensus too between the personnel staff and the coaching staff to get to this 53. And then, you know, as we get out of this meeting now, like George kind of uh, touched on earlier, we'll get to this process tonight. Uh, where we'll bring all hands on deck again. I mean, Tony Lazaro, Scott Flaska from the IT department, or from the you know the analytics department, they'll come in. They'll ping any of these guys that get cut that may be highly rated from the analytics. Um, we bring Brian Stark in the building, our college director. We have our college staff um, scour the entire wire as well, ping any guys that may be fits for us culture wise or they like coming out of the draft. And then you know obviously our in house pro pro department led by Reed Burghardt, A.J. Durso, um, Pat Walsh, Roman Pfeiffer, Kelly Klein, those, those group that we, we, we watch these guys all preseason. So we'll go through the entire wire. It's 800 plus names tonight, you know, and just see if there's anyone that can help, help this team, help this roster, and if we think they're worthy of adding to the group. So it's, it's a long night, but it's fun, and it's, uh, it's thorough, and it's, it's very collaborative. Uh, George, you traded Malik Reed today as well. What went into that decision? Was that a result of just liking your depth at that position? Did you like what you, you got back? Yeah, I mean, I, I love Malik. Everyone does. Uh, great kid, really good player. Uh, we just had a log jam. You know, we had a lot of, we have a lot of really talented outside backers that can rush. And, um, and so, you know, thought it'd be best uh, to trade Malik and trade him to somewhere where he's going to fit in in a really good organization. And um, we wouldn't have just traded him anywhere. Um, he wanted to go to Pittsburgh, and we found, you know, we found a home for him. And I think it, it's a win-win for both sides. George, as the roster construction has evolved, or I guess roster limit and practice squad is maybe one of the net benefits from COVID is the growth there. How nice has that been to, you to keep more of your guys around and, and you know, let them grow? And become yeah, it's really good. And not only to keep your own, but to bring other guys you don't know as well that maybe have some talent. And you bring them in, you can try them out for a couple of weeks. And you hit on a guy maybe like that. But no, it's great uh, when you can keep guys you like, more of them. And, uh, and we still can elevate players. You know, I think each player gets uh, three elevations. And so that gives you a little roster flexibility, which we all love. So. George, you have one for George and one for them. But George, you, are you a little thin in the defensive line? So. I don't think we're thin. I mean, we, have, we kept six. We like all six. Uh, we're hoping to get a few through on the practice squad. Uh, we don't think we're thin. We think we're really strong up there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's never easy cutting guys. This is this is the toughest day, you know, of the year, and I'm sensitive to that, you know, having been cut twice. But a lot of these guys, you know, they understand the business. And I always point to examples. We've got guys on this team that have been cut multiple times or have been on practice squads. You know, you look at Tim Patrick's, Mike Purcells. These are guys that have been through it. So I always point to those examples. Really keep it positive. And you know, now we get the big, the big, uh, bigger practice squad. So we like to bring those guys back. Just need more time to develop. So. I have two first ones for George. George, did, how, how much did money play into uh, the, the factor of choosing Corliss over Sam? It had nothing to do with it. You know, we, we, we picked the punter, the best punter for us, uh, Corliss, and uh, the punter with the most upside, biggest leg, and uh, money had nothing to do with it. And then, Darren, uh, along those lines, how do economics and, and the money factors play into these cuts, and how tough is that to weigh? There's a lot of factors that go into the cuts, you know, whether it's the economics, the medical, and we have a, a team that's all part of those discussions. But at the end of the day, I mean, we're, we're picking the best players that are going to help us win. I mean, we have plenty of cap room to do yeah. what we need to do. We're not going to get rid of a good player that could help yeah. us win, you know, for, a, a, you know, for, for money. Absolutely. Hey, George, um, I, I was curious, um, you know, Russell didn't get any game snaps in the preseason, and a lot of your starters did not. Um, sometimes when teams have done that, you know, September is a little bit of a feeling out process and a, an extension of training camp. Can, can you just speak to the challenges of, um, you know, keeping your starters, especially for us? Yeah, no. Great question. I mean, I think it really um, depends on your team. 
you know, each team is, is different. And, and, you know, a lot of teams are going that direction, not playing their starters. Uh, when you look at our team, you know, we have a quarterback who's played in the league for 10 years. And I know he's in a new offense, but uh, it's similar to what he's run. And then we have a defense. We, we're bringing a lot of our defensive players back with a similar scheme. And so, you know, I don't think it's going to be as drastic here. Um, you know, Coach Hackett obviously brought this from his experience in Green Bay. And, and uh, you know, I know they started, maybe, you know, slow maybe the first game. But, you know, they're 13-3 and three, three years in a row. Uh, Rams are 0-3, you know, last year in the preseason. Um, so I think it just depends on your team and your makeup. And, and uh, you know, I, I think it's, uh, you know, preseason is a, is a great uh, – uh, developmental for the younger players, great evaluation tool for us, for the younger players, and, and for the league. Um, we got a lot of work, you know, in our practices. Our players got after it. You know, uh, we had the Dallas scrimmage, but other than that, these guys, when they worked, uh, they worked. I think it's important for them to be fresh, you know, for this, you know, 17 game journey that they're about to embark on. I think that's more important, and, and I was completely on board with Coach Hackett. One, one quick follow up. Um, how, how valuable did you, given that philosophy, We loved it. We're going to do it more and more in the future and, and uh, maybe, you know, with two teams. But it, it was great. Uh, you know, when you're – you get sick of going against each other. I'm sure you talk to our players. So when you have a new team come in, it raises uh, the juice of, of the entire, you know, the practice, definitely. Yeah, I got two guys. Uh, first one, we saw Dulcich here and there, but what's going on there? Yeah. It's – you know, hamstrings are strange, Mike. And uh, – you know, he was really close to coming back, and then, you know, he tweaked it. Um, I wouldn't call it a setback, but he just can't get over that hump. And, he, you know, he thinks he could probably be ready, you know, maybe in a week or two. But we don't – you know, I've said this a number of times, but we want to protect him from himself. And, uh, and so we're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to take the conservative route, which we like to do with these type of injuries. And he's going to help us win a lot of football games this year. He'll be ready, you know, after those four games are up. And, and in the meantime, he'll be training. And you guys see him working. Um, um, so we look forward to getting them back. And then secondly, uh, just on the undrafted, you kept that run going with uh, Jalen Virgil. Brandon Johnson, he, he had a tough break, and, uh, and Virgil, you went with speed. You got a lot of uh, speed at the back end of the receiver. Yeah, I mean, I think you need speed in this league. And, uh, you know, Virgil obviously provides that. Um, you know, he, this guy, every game he made plays. And he made, you know, made plays every practice. Um, he can cover kicks. He's an interesting guy. He can return kicks. Really good returner in college. Um, he's just answered, you know, every test and, and, and aced it. So, um, and he's got legit speed. You know, he can take the top off. So we're excited for him. And Brandon Johnson. Uh, Brandon was just a pro the minute he walked in the door. You know, and I don't know if it comes from his dad, you know, being a professional baseball player. But, uh, you know, he reminded me of a third four-year pro, uh, long, athletic, um, can get in and out of his cuts. And, and, again, it wasn't too big for him. A lot of these kids, when they walked in, uh, it's too big. Guys like he and Montrell and Virgil, it's pretty unique to have these guys uh, just walk in the door and they act like they belong. George, question for you. What do you think with Billy Turner? Do you believe he will be ready then? No I do. I'm encouraged with Billy. And, we're, you know, the strides he's taken in the last couple of weeks and, and – uh, you know, I think I, I do. I think he has a good chance to be ready. I know he wants to play. That's his goal. If not, we feel good with our depth. But uh, I think Billy's right on track. Also, DeMar Mathis made a push. It played well in preseason corner. Do you feel you're covered there, though, if because Darby and Kwan have missed games throughout their career? I mean, we have five corners. That's typically what teams, you know, five or six. And uh, I feel good. I mean, we got a good mix of of, of uh, veteran and younger players. You, you know, and and. Uh, Darb and Kwan are the kind of the veteran, and, and really, you know, Pat's really a vet. He's a second-year vet. And then you have this young, really talented kid, Damari Mathis, and I, and I think he's ready to go if he has to play. And, and then you got Bass, who's kind of – he can do everything. You know, he can play inside, he can play outside. He played a little safety. And then we'll kind of see what we get on our practice squad. We'll see what we find on the wire. I mean, you know, we're always looking. Hey, George, two for you. Uh, Tiger Cleveland, so he's not going on IR, so I assume – He's not. Still good about the throat and then ready for week one. We do, we do. Yeah, I think he's, you know, I think he's, he's just about back. I, I, I can't remember what day he's coming back, but uh, we feel he's, he's ready. And then Mike Purcell, not on the initial 53, but do you expect to resign? Mike, well? yeah, that was uh, just procedural. We have to hold these IR guys until tomorrow. So Purcell and Tomlinson, a uh, big part of what we're doing. Mike's one of our core guys. You know, we didn't play him in the preseason, and, and uh, they're going to be here. They're doing a favor for the team. They're taking one for the team. 
George, just a follow up on, on Brandon Johnson. Did he have, he told us it was sprained ankles and more extensive than that? Or? You know, I think he had a high ankle, you know, and, and uh, so it, it's going to take a little time. And, uh, you know, so we, we're, we're looking forward to getting him back. And then with, I know you have a lot to work through, obviously, with, with the, the wire and all that, but did you sense with being able to put more veterans on a practice squad that you handled decisions any differently in that regard or that teams around the league maybe have took a little bit of I, I think you're always weighing, um, you know, who you can get through. You know, can you get this guy, you know, maybe you keep a guy you don't think you can get through if, if it's even, right? You know, and, and how do you know that? You just, you have a feel, you have an instinct. Um, you know, younger guys, you know, that, uh, you know, maybe have a cheaper contracts are harder to get through, you know, and so you just kind of weigh that and it doesn't mean you're always right. But a lot of conversations, can we get this guy through? Can we get this guy through? I think we can, so let's, okay, uh, let's, let's, let's cut him and keep someone else, so. And then to elaborate on just the 16-man practice squad and the vet stuff, there's a fine line of like, are you just going to, you can only carry so many vets to begin with, but then, you know, are you going to use those spots to just get a bunch of vet type players or kind of developmental young guys that need time? They may be a year or so away. So we kind of weigh that balance internally as well with, hey, this guy's a year or so away, but there's some developmental traits there. Keep him around. Okay, we need a vet at a vet backup at this spot. Let's get a vet practice squad player. Yeah, maybe if you're light on the 53 yeah. at a certain position, you want a vet yeah. at that practice squad position, you know, and then other positions you're deeper, you can afford to have a developmental guy, yep. you know, throughout for the year. And uh, so it's just roster, you know. Roster management, management. case by case. I got uh, one for each of you. Mooj, how, I guess, gratifying you to have eight of your nine draft picks make the initial roster? No, it feels good. You know, every time we draft a guy, we put a lot of effort into it and, you know, anticipate those guys contributing. And, you know, with the one guy fan, that was another tough cut for us. And, you know, that's just day one of the 53. We could call on Fayon in a week. You never know. So, but we do feel good about the eight of the nine contributing. And, uh, you know, I'm not surprised. Those guys are all, have all worked really hard and, and uh, earned that spot. And, and Jordan, you sort of touched on it when Arnie was asking about Coach Hackett playing your starters in the preseason, but as he was presenting his whole idea with regen days and, and kind yeah. of his entire approach, was there any pushback or was there just like, okay, let's see how, let's how that goes? No, we talked it through. I mean, Nate has a plan. and He didn't just – this is not something he just came up with. I mean, he, he thinks everything through. He has a plan. He uses the data. He uses sports science. He listens to a lot of people. He's very collaborative. So it wasn't just like one little conversation. Um, you know, Nate's very prepared in everything he does. And, and uh, so I really respect it. I, I liked his plan for the training camp. I think it'll benefit us. And, uh, you know, whether we start slow or not, I do not know. But I think, you know, mid to late season, I think it'll benefit us. One for each of you. First for George. Uh, were you hoping to get more draft picks and more trades done in the last 48 hours since a few months ago? You said you wanted a lot more picks next year than the five yet. You know, um, you always want to get picks, right? But you, you also want to keep your best players. And so, you know, we had opportunities to trade players, but we, we also want to win now. You know, we want to win this year. And so, um, yeah, yeah there, there's a, a fine line, you know, just getting picks to get picks. But uh, we also want to win games. But, uh, yeah, no, we're – anytime we can get a pick, we will. You know, we did move up a little bit. That doesn't count as a pick, but uh, it's still a trade. But we'll see. I mean, it's a long – we got a ways to go. And Darren, you mentioned earlier that there was a lot of consensus between personnel and coaches. So for those of us not in the room, kind of, what is that like when you guys are kind of on the same page with those departments compared to maybe some years where personnel and coaches aren't quite seeing that? It's good. It feels good. And you know, we try and we do we do a process and and. Um, you know, where we try and kind of keep it separate, where us personnel guys come up with the 53, have discussions separate from the coaches, because we don't want to create this group think, right? But we do our process, they do theirs, and we come to the table at the end, and when the 53 aligns and there's a lot of consensus, it, it does feel good. And where there's some maybe toss-up, even then it was kind of like, yeah, we, we were st stuck here too, these, and we just talked through it, we have the conversations, um, you know, take all the variables in, but, it was pretty smooth and, and uh, pretty easy. Never easy making the cuts, but in terms of us coming together, it was really good. I just want to ask you both about mediating that process with mm -hmm. coaches who are passionate about certain players and decisions you have to make. And can you talk about both of you, anybody who's a little more colorful? Or <laughs> it's, it's not as colorful as you think. I mean, it's just uh, a lot of really good conversation. And we've had these conversations throughout. Yeah 
training camp. You know, after every game, we meet for about three hours. You know, the next, on a, you know, all our games are on su Saturday. We meet on Sunday for three hours, a total deep dive on how they played, where they are. Um, and then after that, we'll kind of do an initial 53. So we didn't have our first 53 meeting yesterday. Now, there will be some tough questions. You know, well, why did you rank this guy here? You know, why did you rank this guy here? Last week, you had him here. So it's not all fun and games. And, there, you know, you ask tough questions, and, and that's what it's all about, but very respectful. Um, and uh, Nathaniel's a great leader. And uh, so it's just it's, it's seamless, but it's not all, you know, it's not all fun and games. Yeah, and I wouldn't just say the coaches. There's a lot of scouts that are passionate about these players too, um, and we feel that. And it's everyone understands where everyone's coming from, but it is a good collaborative process. There is some passion on both sides of the table, but we all we're all in it for the good, and it's worked out really well. How the, how the guys do? You had look at other teams. Did you have people look at other teams to be the GM? Oh yeah, no, they did great. So our our um, our pro scouting staff, uh, led by. Uh, Reed Burkhart, you know, they, they meet, they met Friday and they met for three hours, four hours together with our college scouts via Zoom. And they came up with their 53 and their 16 man practice squad. And uh, they were the, Reed and, and AJ Durso were the GMs. And then we came in, they presented. And, uh, and so it was cool, you know, a totally um, objective opinion, you know, without us in the room and, and the, they presented it. And, I kind of laughed and no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that, you know, but no, it was really good. And it, you know, gives them um, ownership and uh, they had, they had ideas that maybe I didn't think about or Mooj didn't yeah. think about. And so it's really cool. And then the coaches come in with their 53 and then we kind of laugh again. No, we don't laugh, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, so it's really good process. Yeah. Having that a part of our process is really good too uh, on the personnel side, just because a lot of those college scouts, We'll have what I kind of call like clean eyes or unbiased eyes. Where we have a lot of discussion, like George mentioned, with the staff every day. So they naturally might create some, you know, everyone's going down a path where our college, college scouts who aren't in the building hearing all the conversation when they're just watching with clean eyes, they might rank it different. So it's really, it's a really good practice for us to kind of lead to those discussions and debates. Um, but yeah, we feel really good about it. Final two, we'll do Mark and then Nick Cosmeyer. This is for George. Now that you've seen this rookie class get to work for what four months now, um, how much do you think this class can help you win this year? To use your term, and where are you most excited about? It? Yeah, no, I think they have to help us this year, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I mean, this is a. Uh, there's not a lot of splash yet with this group. It's uh, kind of a nuts and bolts. Uh, again, they come in, they work. Um, they get after it. They're tough. Um, you know, Badolcic, unfortunately, he's hurt. He's going to be a splash kind of guy. Um, Benito doesn't say anything, but he can rush the passer. Um, and we got two defensive linemen that are nuts, you know, just blue collar guys that help stuff the run. And then, um, you know, I, I love the corner. So, I mean, I, I guess it, I don't know how much splash, but I think these guys are really going to help us, help us on special teams. Um, they're going to do their job. Uh, you know, I don't know how many starters we'll get initially out of this group uh, like we did last year. Um, but I think this group is going to really help the foundation and, and you know, uh, the middle of the roster, um, if that answers your question. Last one, Nick. George, I'm sure when you guys were doing your homework on, on Russell, you noticed that, that he ran quite a bit less last, last year in 2021. Fewer, a few fewer scrambles, fewer design runs. And I'm curious whether you see that trend continuing for him in this offense or whether you think that that needs to be more a part of his game in order to, to kind of maximize all of his talent. I think, you know, Russell can beat you in so many different ways. You know, he can beat you in the pocket. He can beat you out of the pocket. He can beat you off schedule. Um, you've seen him run a lot out here. He still looks like he can run. So I'm sure he's going to use whatever he can. I'm not sure what happened last year, why he didn't run enough. But he's running a lot here. He, he still looks, you know, he's like he has fresh legs. He can move. He looks young. Um, so I expect him to use everything at his disposal. That's what makes him so great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.